The Dual Squared is a semi-automatic belay device. It increases the brake force by pinching the rope in between the carabiner and the device when under load. The thinner the rope used, the weaker the blocking support. The rope is inserted so that the brake end of the rope comes out the front of the device. Using the carabiner, attach the rope and jewel squared to the harness as depicted on the device. Then the carabiner is locked. When performing a partner check, you have to see in the functional test whether the rope has been inserted correctly and the blocking support activates. When belaying top rope, the brake hand pulls the slack rope out of the front of the device in a bow movement while the guide hand at the same time pushes the rope into the belay device. Then the brake hand tunnels up the brake side of the rope back into the home position. Thumb and index finger form a circle so that the brake hand firmly encloses the rope at all times. The brake hand may never stay above the device line here. The device line is the imaginary horizontal line on a level with the belay device when under load. It is more or less on a level with the sternum. Okay, zu. When taking the climber, the belayer puts the rope under full load with all his body weight so that it is tightened and the blocking mode is activated. When lowering the climber, the brake hand encloses the brake side of the rope while the guide hand pushes the nose upwards to the front in a controlled manner. By this, the blocking support function is released. The B layer lets the rope pass through the device slowly and under control. The last meters to the floor, you have to see that the landing area is clear. In the home position, when B laying lead, the thumb is inside the thumb gate and the device is tilted to the bottom. The rest of the brake hand encloses the rope. The guide hand encloses the climber's end of the rope. From this position, rope may easily be taken up or paid out. The challenge in lead belaying is the permanent change between paying out and taking in rope. For paying out rope, thumb and index finger form a circle around the brake side rope while the thumb lifts the thumb gate. The guide hand may pay out rope, then the thumb immediately tilts the nose back down. Excessive slack rope is pulled in and the brake hand moves back into its home position. In case of a fall, the brake hand moves downward and securely takes hold of the rope. The blocking support takes effect. If the brake hand is not in the right position, the blocking support does not work. If the B layer permanently pushes the thumb gate upwards, he deactivates the blocking support an unexpected fall is hard to hold. If the brake hand does not fully enclose the rope, no full control over the brake side rope is given. The brake hand is in control of the brake side rope at all times and never stays above the device line. When no rope has to be paid out or taken up, the brake hand remains in its home position. This way, also an unexpected fall may be held securely.